Good morning. I'm Father Dexter, and welcome to our Wednesday morning prayer service on this November 24th. The hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for such the Father seeks to worship him. For those of, the, of you that have a Book of Common Prayer, we're starting on page 79. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways and to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. The Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bend down and bend the knee, kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to hear his voice. The Psalms for this morning are Psalms 131 and 133. O oh Lord, my heart is not lifted up, my eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me, but I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weakened child with its mother. My soul is like the weakened child that is with me. O oh Israel, hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Harriman, which falls on the Zion, mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading of the gospel according to Matthew. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astounded and said, Then who can be saved? For Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, Look, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? And Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne of glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold, will inherit eternal life, but many who are first 
will be last, and the last will be first. The word of the Lord. I did a sermon on this particular passage a few weeks ago, and I'm just, I don't want to re really repeat myself, but really the crux of the message is that oftentimes we find people that do have wealth or do have material things, they, they're focused on the, the accumulation of those things instead of being a disciple of Christ and helping those that are in need. So that's where our focus should be, especially in this time as we approach Thanksgiving and in our Advent season, is remembering to those that are less fortunate and try and help them. On page 86, we have the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the Great One is in the midst of you, is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. On page 96, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrage A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The colic for this morning. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A collect for grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. 
Grant that the people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning we ask for strength and healing for O.T., Allison, Ty, Clark, Sandra, Robert, Roberta, Roy, Lillian, Linda, Barbara, Gary, Angela, Edie, John, Tom, Joyce, Karen, Ray, Dorothy, David. And let's take a moment so that you can add your own prayers and intercessions. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in thy son's name, we beseech thee mercifully to incline thy ear to us who have now made our prayers and supplications unto thee, and grant that those things which we have asked faithfully according to thy will may be obtained effectively to the relief of our necessity and to the setting forth of thy glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to welcome, we have Pat and Sandra, and uh, this evening, I think last week we decided that we weren't going to be doing a, a Bible study uh, this evening, but Pat, I do have your questions, and I already have answers for you, so I'll be sending you those. Uh, next week, we will be starting our Advent study, our four-week Advent study. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.